Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Fire is the most terrifying disaster imaginable. It can spread quickly, destroying everything in its path, and can cause serious damage. In buildings, we rely on different fire safety systems to protect ourselves. For example, smoke detectors, fire extinguishers, and sprinkler systems. These measures are crucial for saving lives and minimizing destruction. But did you know that similar systems are also essential for aircraft carriers? These massive ships carrying tons of flammable materials like jet fuel and weapons are prepared for the worst. The importance of these safety measures was highlighted on July 29, 1967, when a fire broke out on the USS Forrestal. This happened because a Zuni rocket accidentally fired due to an electrical fault, hitting the fuel tank of an A-4 Skyhawk. The jet fuel spilled, ignited, and started a chain reaction of explosions. The result was catastrophic. One hundred and thirty-four sailors lost their lives. One hundred and sixty-one were injured. And the damage exceeded seventy-two million. This was not the only incident. Severe other incidents happened in the same decade on American carriers. USS Oriskany in 1966 and the USS Enterprise in 1969, which also resulted in several casualties. These incidents resulted in the establishment of Farrier Firefighting School in Norfolk, Virginia, in honor of Chief Gerald W. Farrier, who bravely led Damage Control Team 8 in the USS Forrestal Fire. Apart from damage control teams, maintaining readiness for such catastrophic events requires extensive training and regular drills. The crew undergoes various training exercises to ensure everyone knows their role during an emergency. Binding their skills together in tough times. Come in, do your part, bring it in. These drills are essential to enhance skills and coordination between and keeping the ship clean and prepared for any situation, including CBRN threats. By simulating these scenarios, the crew can respond swiftly and effectively, safeguarding both the vessel and everyone on board. To understand the solution to a problem, it's essential to understand the problem first. Let's explore what CBRN attacks are. CBRN attacks stand for chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear attacks. CBRN defense includes a range of protective measures designed to counteract hazards posed by chemical, biological, radiological, or nuclear threats, including terrorism. CBRN defense includes passive protection, 
contamination avoidance, and mitigation of weapons of mass destruction. While hazardous material incidents are typically accidental, CBRN incidents are often assumed to be intentional and malicious and potentially result in mass casualties. That's why responding to a CBRN attack involves preserving evidence and apprehension. In fact, a 2011 forecast projected that the global government is spending approximately $8.38 billion on CBRN defense products and services, highlighting the significant investment in this critical defense area. Contamination prevention on naval vessels is an important aspect of maintaining safety and operational integrity. Advanced sprinkler systems play a vital role in this process. Salt water, which is readily available on a flight deck, is sprinkled periodically to neutralize toxins and also helps in case of large-scale fire suppression. Salt water is an ideal choice over fresh water as it kills some bacteria and also neutralizes and dissipates bad smells. In addition to automated systems, every crew member on board is trained to respond to contamination events. Regular exercises ensure that all personnel are proficient in using protective equipment, such as masks, jackets, pants, and shoes designed to protect them from harmful substances. This specialized gear is known as mission-oriented protective posture gear. It is essential for safeguarding sailors during chemical, biological, radiological, or nuclear incidents. In case we do happen to come under a CBR attack, this is very important. This will save your life. This will keep you from dying, from getting sick. Beyond the immediate threats and CBRN attacks, infectious diseases also pose a significant threat to crew and sailors on board. Diseases such as influenza, norovirus, and the most recent COVID-19 can spread rapidly, endangering the health and operational readiness of the crew. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Aircraft carriers and other naval vessels implemented strict preventative measures to minimize the spread of the virus. Periodic sanitization of the entire ship became routine. And any crew member diagnosed with the virus was quickly transported for treatment. To facilitate the safe transport of an infected person, a specialized team transfers the infected person into a negatively pressurized Conex. This is done to avoid the spread of the virus, which is transported through a cargo aircraft to the treatment facility. This initiative spearheaded by the Agile Combat Support Directorate's Air Force CBRN Defense Systems Branch, in collaboration with the Joint Program Executive Office for Chemical, Biological, Radiological, and Nuclear Defense and other organizations, aim to develop a safe transport module for individuals infected with COVID-19 and other highly infectious diseases. The NPC is designed to carry up to 28 individuals at a time. After transportation, the affected individuals are treated in the hospital. So the best part of this unit is having an operational impact uh, while still being medical, seeing the way that medicine ties into the warfighter uh, and being able to be a part of that and support that is a huge accomplishment. 
to minimize the risk of the spread of the virus, the area where the infected persons were living is sanitized. Additionally, if the individual was assigned to a specific workstation or operated equipment, those areas are sanitized and cleaned correctly. This decontamination process is crucial for protecting the rest of the crew members and sailors on board. It is a constant and rigorous effort across the ship, ensuring that every potential spread of infection is addressed to maintain a healthy environment. Apart from CBRN attacks and diseases, there's another severe threat to consider, landmines. Since World War I, landmines have been a serious post-war threat to civilians, as well as military personnel. These hidden explosive traps are designed to disable enemy troops and vehicles and are often buried underneath the surface. Sadly, they don't go away when the fighting stops and are still active, posing a constant danger. Dealing with landmines is an essential and risky duty. First, you must locate them. Then carefully disarm or remove them to avoid unintentional explosions. This position is critical to saving lives. Innovations such as ground penetrating radar and robotic mine clearers have improved safety and efficiency. Nonetheless, landmines pose a substantial concern in many regions of the world. That way, this goes. For years, specialized personnel have been trained to locate and defuse landmines. However, a fresh and interesting option has emerged, drones. These drones, outfitted with modern cameras and sensors, can patrol regions to find landmines. Let's see how this technology works. First, the drones capture detailed images of the ground. These images are then processed using sophisticated image processing techniques. This can be done by an onboard computer or through cloud computing. The process data is compared to a database of known landmine images. When a landmine is detected, the drone marks its location on a software map. Then, the landmine can be safely diffused by crew members or neutralized using a mortar-mounted launcher. This concept got a real-world test in late March 2024 at the Yuma Test Center in Yuma Proving Ground, Arizona. The ground obstacle breaching lane neutralizer test involved a combat vehicle equipped with a mortar-mounted launcher for neutralization, a drone for mine detection, and the mine detection device itself. The test highlighted how integrating advanced technology can make mine detection and neutralization safer and more effective. The dedication to continuous improvement and the integration of cutting-edge technology underscore the commitment to safeguarding the lives of those who serve. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.